What's up, everyone? I Irvin TV, Double I TV, whatever you guys want to call me, as long as it's nothing disrespectful. Because if it gets disrespectful, then um, I'm gonna put rabbit poop in your cereal. Yes, I'm gonna put rabbit poop in your cereal, and it's gonna look like the cereal, and you're gonna end up actually eating it, especially if it's some cocoa puffs. Oh yeah, you're definitely gonna accidentally eat it. Look up rabbit poop. And then Steven's just gonna sit there and watch me do it because he's Steven. Mm, mm, I'm sorry, I just finished eating. But ain't that right, Steven? You're just gonna watch, right? Right, cause you know, Steven always got my back. But anyway, and I welcome y'all to episode 24 of Squirrel Moments, the podcast. Today it is June the 30th. It is the last day of June. It is 10:37 p.m. And um, but yeah, I know it's been a while since I recorded an episode of the podcast, but here we are. Here we are. Um, man, I got a lot to talk about right now. I got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to get into today. Um, we're just gonna have some fun today on this episode of the podcast. Even though all episodes, um, other podcasts, I always have fun, but this is gonna be fun because, like I said, there's a lot to discuss. You know, um, but yeah. So we're gonna be getting into it. But before we get into it, I just want everybody to follow all of my social medias, which is going to be on the screen. But I, um, but it, for my people that's listening to the audio version, I have a Twitter, course YouTube. Um, I have a Kick, which is a streaming website. I used to stream on Twitch. I'll no longer stream on there. Um, TikTok, Instagram, all of that. Um, just. Type in iUrban TV and you'll be able to find me. So yeah. Um, go ahead and follow all my social medias. Also, you're not obligated to do this, but if you want to, if you want to support the channel, support the movement, all that kind of stuff, um, you can go ahead and donate to my cash app, which is iUrban TV, dollar sign iUrban TV. So again, you're not obligated to, but if you want to, I definitely appreciate it. And I thank you ahead of time. But anyway, let's go in and get into it. Let's go get into it. Let's go get into it. Guess what? Your boy's a big YouTuber now. <laughs> Not a big YouTuber, but I definitely have made a leap. If you don't know, I recently, well, in my notes, I said 500 subscribers. But by the time I got to record this, which again, today is the 30th, it's actually a Friday. On the 30th, by the time I got to record this, I hit 600 subscribers. Yes, I, I finally hit. Um, so I was on the road to 500 subscribers and I got there. Then a few days later or about a week later, I'm at 600 now. And you know what helped me? What helped me get there? I did a reaction to the Starfield Direct, right? That video, mind you, usually at most I get like a few hundred views for my big videos usually there's an average 20 30 40 views and i know that's not a lot but for me especially where i'm at right now that's a decent amount but the starfield direct reaction has reached over 10 000 views as of today as of the 30th of june it has reached over 10 000 fucking views you don't believe me? You can go ahead and check it out. YouTube.com slash TV. Shameless plug. But anyway, um, yeah. Like, I was surprised how big it got. And the thing is, I'm glad. I almost didn't um do that video because it took me a few days to edit it. I, I think like three, four days. Because the video is like a, um over an hour long, which is another reason why I'm surprised. Because usually a video that long, you know, our attention span is very short. So the fact is over 10,000 videos. And then the comment, the comment section, I love it. I love it. I really, oh shoot, I forgot to do something. I'm gonna I'm show y'all what I mean in a second. But um, a matter of fact, let me go ahead and pull that up while I'm discussing that. But when I say, I was, like I said, I was surprised. Cause when I first check it, like a um, 
like a day later, I'm like looking like it was almost at a thousand views. Then two days later, it's over a thousand. And then my subscriber count keep going up. I'm like, oh, okay, we almost at 500. Next day, over 500. A week later, 600. Do you imagine? How, can y'all imagine how I was feeling at the time? I was happy. I'm texting. I'm messaging everybody. I'm texting everybody. Hey, yo, look at the views I got. Look how many subscribers I got. This, that, and whoopty, whoopty, whoop. Like I said, my goal was 500 subscribers because I think when I got to 100 subscribers, yes, it's 100 subscribers, I did the spicy wing challenge, right? Now that we at 500 subscribers, I said I was going to do the spicy noodle challenge. And guess what, y'all? If you're watching the video version... I got some spicy noodles and it's not just the regular spicy noodles it's twice as spicy so yeah i'm gonna be doing that challenge pretty soon i'm trying to figure out when i'm gonna do it which is gonna be pretty soon but yeah i'm gonna be putting out the video soon well i'm gonna be recording the video and then i'm gonna put it out of course and then i'm also doing the q a as well so if you listen to this if you have any questions any i already have a few questions but if you have any questions go ahead and send them my way and i'll go ahead and answer it during the q a during the um noodle challenge um yeah so i'm definitely excited for that because i'm all over the place right now um i'm having a steven moment but i'm just happy that i that i I got to this point because I work hard to get to this point. It took me a couple years. It took me like two years, I want to say, to get to 500 subscribers after I hit the, the 100 subscriber mark. So, yeah. And ever since this has been going on, I've been keeping up with the momentum. Like, I ain't going to lie. The last, you know, this year has been a tough year. And the fact that I, um, once I put out that video, I... Hold on, let me go back. Ooh, 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 ooh. This has been a tough year, so it's been kind of hard to put out content. But there was a certain point when I was like, you know what? I'm just going to bury myself and work to deal with it because, you know, it is hot in here. If y'all see me sweating, my fault. But I was like, you know what? That's what's going to help me get through uh, what I'm going through because this is what I love to do. So, and then when I put out the... Um, when I put out the Starfield video, hold on, y'all. There we go. All right, because I want to show y'all something in a second. But when I put out that Starfield video, I was like, you know what? I'm going to bury myself from work. I'm going to do a lot of videos, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. And ever since this, this Starfield video has been put out, Oh, I've been consistent. I've been putting out TikToks, uh, again, videos, all that kind of stuff. And this is another reason why I'm doing the podcast now, because I'm trying to keep up with the momentum. So, but yeah. So that being said, I want to thank everybody, all my new subscribers, all, all of my new subscribers, all of my old subscribers for, for um, supporting me, for joining, for subscribing, all that stuff. All the people that's commenting on the video and all that stuff. And really, that's seeing all the comments made me realize my vision is coming to fruition. And what I mean by that, when I first started um, doing YouTube, right, before I consider myself a, you know, a content creator, because I don't like the term YouTube because it just, it limits you. That's why I like saying content creator, because I'm on different platforms, creating different type of content instead of with the whoop. But, um... When I first started YouTube, it was, I had this vision. I said, I just want to create a community of like minds without any judgment and all this kind of stuff. And the comic section is this, it feels just like that because everybody's having a good discussion. All the comments for the most part are good. Of course, you have your few in which I'm going to show y'all something because this is, this is funny. I, I want to show you something. If you watch the video version, I, of course, I'm also reading for my audio listeners as well, but it was just I felt like a community, you know, I'm liking, loving comments. I'm responding to comments and all this kind of stuff. I know eventually it's going to get to the point I can barely keep up because I can barely keep up with just this one video um, with all the comments. But it's just my vision is coming to fruition because, like I said, when I first started, that's what I wanted, just community of like mine. And the funny thing is, 
I told y'all before, I want to become a full-time content creator, and I know that's going to take a while. Um, but at first, I didn't even want to want to be a full-time content creator because I had my fears at first. And those fears are still there, but I'm like, I'm more confident now. And my fear was that I become a full-time YouTuber, which again, this is before I decided to use the term content creator, was what if YouTube decided to monetize my channel on accident or whatever the case is, then that's my ass right there. So that's why I have multiple platforms. So for promotional reasons to connect with everybody and just in case something happened on one platform, I still have these other platforms that I can rely on. So again, thank you everybody who's been supporting me all that kind of stuff who's been liking the videos commenting on the videos watching the videos like i said ten thousand views on a video that is over an hour long the fact that people sat there and watched it and enjoy it and the reason why i did that video because i've said this before and i'm gonna keep saying that i'm a sci-fi nerd and ever since i saw the gameplay last year for starfield that's what really got me interested because and I keep having this comparison. I know people kind of getting tired of it, but I always think about Star Citizen and No Man's Sky because that's the kind of game I always wanted since I was a kid was to be able to go into space, go to different planets, land wherever you want, all this kind of stuff, explore. And the fact that there's a market for these kind of games now makes me happy. So that's the reason why I reacted to it because, again, last year, that's what caught my interest. And when they showed it this year, gameplay <clears throat> excuse me gameplay looks so much better it was so much smoother and they introduced a lot of stuff so yeah but again we had 600 subscribers and um i'm just gonna keep going that's the only thing i can do is keep going um again for those that don't know who just um, resubscribe to my channel of course i do videos of course we got the podcast like we're doing right now of course i got the tiktok got the short videos also got um what else i just i i just got a lot that's going on and i work real hard to make my content so because i just don't do i mean sometimes i do throwaway content but even then with doorway content I, content i know there's a market out there for that for like for example i stream right and usually i like to edit and all this kind of stuff but with like streams especially when i'm playing a specific game i just render it and upload it because i know there's a market for that people might want to watch that so i put it out there so but yeah so I'm planning on just keep on moving and all this stuff. Now, I want to read y'all this comment, right? And the reason why I want to read y'all this comment because it just... It was a disagreement, but it was so uncomprehensible. I was just like, what are they talking about? So I'm going to show y'all right now. And I'm going to read it for my audio listeners. So here we go. Um, Here we go. So it starts off like this. Stop talking about $70 for the love of God. Games back when 70 was 95-ish in today's money for short games. <laughs> Nintendo puts out 11-hour Metro game, It's Love. This game is main quest, only 27 plus. It's probably going to be more than that. FYI, Sony, who is bad, has a $400 PC, the same cost of the 2013. What What is he talking about? <laughs> What is the 2013? Microsoft kind of the same. Use math. And the reason why I was loud because he put in all capitals. For real, I, I knew people making 14 an hour. See, that's what I'm going to say now. Something don't make sense. I'm just going to say use math. <laughs> use math. For real, I knew people making 14 an hour in a medium-sized town, going to the MF movies and spending 17-ish. So with number of math taxes, maybe 2.4 hours of work versus 1.5 hours movie. They might not like, like I said, it was. Oh, I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep reading. 
2.4 hours of work versus 1.5 hour movie they might not like with snacks where people are like well 70 bucks for a game i might spend 40 plus hours on wolf i gotta cry about math what the f this is how stalker at mf grocery stores is a homeowner what are you talking about and any mech game wait for a sale i have over 120 hours in hearthstone while i spend only about 90 bucks over seven years and if 70 is too much for any medium to high gamer you have a youtube to r a high get game pass oh my game pass please you, you oh my gosh <laughs> and 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 then the crazy thing about it, it it makes i was okay in the first half i was like okay i see what he said and now that I'm reading it over, I really don't see what he's saying. <laughs> I'm like, what? This doesn't even make any sense. I say, this sounds like a boomer. But at the same time, as I'm reading, I'm like, no, the grammar is too bad for them to be a, 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 a boomer. The grammar is terrible. Like, this made no sense. That's why now, if something don't make sense, I'm just going to say use math. Like, this, this comment makes no sense. I'm going to read it again. Stop talking about $70 for the love of God. Games back when 70 was 95-ish in today's money for short games. Nintendo put out 11-hour Metroid game. It's love. This game is a main quest, only 27-plus hours. And you know what's funny? He contradicted himself. He said, this game is main quest. Okay, main quest, 27-plus. I might spend 40-plus hour on Wolf. That don't even make no sense. What are you talking about, my man? I don't even want to read it no more because it just it, it, it hurts my head. <laughs> I laugh at comments like that. that this kind of comment and you know my favorite one is when people be like stop pausing stop pausing and and let the video play first of all this is what i tell everybody if you don't want to watch a, a reaction go and watch the actual video it is a reaction i am reacting to what am i <laughs> y'all need to learn the definition of fair use y'all y'all need to learn that but that's what the reaction is you're looking at the video you see something you pause it you comment on what's going on you give a commentary and then you keep on going but i will say this i appreciate somebody in the comment section they was like um what they say i actually appreciate the fact that you pause it is actually much better because people can absorb it and all that kind of stuff so i really appreciate that person that um that said that i'm glad that they understand what um you know what the what the point of pausing and all that kind of stuff is so and i know i'm all over the place that's why the the, the name of the podcast is squirrel moment squirrels i want a pet squirrel and no steven is not a pet and you better not call steven a pet otherwise i'm gonna let him um tear your nuts apart ain't that right steven right we don't tolerate disrespect over here but anyway um like i say if it gets disrespectful i'm gonna put rabbit poop in your cereal y'all think i'm joking all right keep finding out one day you're gonna look in your cocoa puffs and there's gonna be smaller cocoa puffs in there keep it up <laughs> squirrel but um i don't even know what i was talking about oh the comments and all that kind. anyway I'm, I'm just going to leave it at this. I Again, I appreciate everybody, all my new subscribers, all my old subscribers. Um, again, check out all my social medias, which is Irving TV. I got different content on each platform. And, you know, sometimes I do kind of repeat content on each platform. But each platform offers something a tad bit different. So, yeah, that's all I have on that. Um, you know, reaching 600 subscribers again. We're going to be doing the spicy noodle challenge. And I know my mouth is going to be burning. And I know I'm probably going to shit fire. Because last year, I did the one chip challenge. I actually threw up afterwards. I should go ahead and watch that. I Don't, don't worry. It ain't no throwing up in the video. It was afterwards. But, um, yeah. So, with the spicy noodle challenge, which was my sister's idea. When I reached 100, it was actually her idea. But, um... This is the last spicy challenge I have. Because after that one chip challenge, I was like, yeah, I don't have many spicy challenges left for me. And the crazy thing is, I grew up eating spicy food and all that kind of stuff. I actually had to... When I was younger, I used to eat spicy food just for spice. 
But now as I got older, I do it more for flavor. So when people be like, that doesn't burn your mouth, why you use so much hot sauce? No, I use it for flavor. I don't do the all, I don't do super spicy anymore. I don't do super spicy anymore. Well, with the exception of these noodles that's sitting right here, you know. But yeah, that's all I have on that before we move on. Um, actually, before we move on, you have anything else to say, Steven? Right. Yeah, Steven, um, Steven wants y'all to keep on liking and keep on subscribing, keep on supporting, and all that kind of stuff. And again, we appreciate everything. We we I, I definitely appreciate it because y'all helping me make my vision come true. Like I say, we're sp we're still at a small spot, but everybody has started at a small spot. And I feel like the more I keep pushing, eventually I'm gonna be at uh, a thousand subscribers. I, I feel like with the pace that's going, again, it's gonna slow down. I know it's gonna slow down. I know it's gonna slow down, but I feel like by the end of this year or next year, I'll be at a thousand subscribers. And then we can go ahead and start monetizing and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's it now um now i'll tell y'all what i've been doing for the last few weeks actually for the last couple of days i um now y'all know i don't really watch tv that well no no that's a lot it's not that i don't watch tv i don't watch shows or movies that much because i've been all i do is watch youtube but y'all know i'm a huge hip-hop fan i love hip-hop up and down all the way you know even though the music nowadays is questionable within that questionable jumbleness and mumbleness <laughs> there's some good ass music out there now with that being said um tupac Shakur, Shakur, the dear mama documentary um docu-series i should say recently came out and it's about both tupac and his mother afini Shakur. Uh, or is it Afeni? I'm trying to figure out how her sister say out of respect. Afeni Sikul. And it was talking about um, both Afeni's upbringing, how she was with the Black Panthers. And then what they also did as well is compare Tupac and his mother, like how stuff within their life um, correlate with each other. Um, started from the beginning um, all the way, of course, to Pac's death. No, no, no. It didn't even stop at Pac's death. It stopped at Afeni's um, death. And they covered a lot of stuff on there. And, of course, there's a lot of Tupac documentaries. But this one was a bunch. It was uh, a lot more emotional. And then, if y'all don't know, I love production. I really love production. So I'm looking at the um, production value of the Dear Mama documentary. I'm just like, this is amazing. It's like, and, yeah, the, the docuseries is good. But I'm looking at the 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 again at the production i'm just like wow everything gets smooth and the transitions and all that kind of stuff but also just like of course the subject matter everything that happened in park's life everything that happened in Fanny's life like the last episode ooh, that was a tough one like when it got to the last episode it took me about two three days before i finally finished it and then when i <laughs> when i say it was emotional because through each section of the docuseries, it played like a Tupac song that was significant and that correlated with those moments in his life and his mom's life. So the last episode, mind you, when I was watching the last episode, I'm eating seafood. And yes, I'm all over the place. But I'm eating seafood. And at the end, I got emotional. I'm like trying not to cry. And the thing is this. The song that they played that made me lose it, because I was able to hold it for a bit until this song came on and it made me lose it. It's I ain't mad at you. Like even before the Dyke series, every time I hear that song, it just brings out a lot of emotions on me. Cause I feel like first of all, when you hear that every time I hear that my body goes into chills and I get emotional every single time and then like when at the end of course everybody know Pac died at the end when they was covering that section of his life they start playing I ain't mad at you once I hear that 
I lost it. And mind you, I'm eating seafood, so my tears fall coming out my eyes. My mouth is full, and I'm trying not to wipe my eyes because I'm eating spicy seafood. So I'm trying not to touch my eyes and all that stuff. So I'm like emotional. I'm like, oh gosh, it's like because. There's a lot of Tupac songs that I listen to, like, because he, it's been over 20 years since he passed away. And, like, even, like, majority of his songs now is, like, majority of his songs, it, it, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it matters today because the things he was talking about back in the day still applies to today. So, ooh, and, like, one of my Favorite songs that I listen to that's from Tupac is um, um, Shed So Many Tears. Because it's just like, I've been to that place. I've been down there, that, that road before. I felt like that before. And like, here's the crazy thing. And I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this. The way that the documentary pre presented itself... Pac been through a lot. He been through a lot throughout his career. Constant stuff happening. It went from when he shoot that off-duty police officer to there was a fight at a concert or the show and the little boy got shot and died, um, which he was also facing a lawsuit for that. He went through a lot and then, of course, the sexual assault um, case, all this kind of stuff. He's trying to take care of everybody. Like, his work ethic was just... His last album before um, he died, the Seven Day um, Theory, he finished that in seven days in a week. Like, he was a workaholic. He was trying to take care of everybody. It was to the point you can tell he was stressed the fuck out. And, you know, Pac had so many personalities, you know. Of course, he had that Black Panther inside him. Then he was that gangster rapper. And then he he just had so many sides to him. And I remember at one point during the documentary, they were discussing, like, the the interviewer, the interviewer asked his aunt, I believe it was his aunt, or somebody close to him, it was like, do you think he had multiple personality disorder, anything like that? And she was like, he ain't had this. He wasn't bipolar and all that stuff. I'm starting to think, and again, this is about to be a hot, hot take. Well, it ain't even a hot take. I think Park actually had, might have had bipolar. Think about the way that he, the way that he acted, the way that everything that was going on with him. Mind you, during that time, mental health wasn't really discussed. So imagine he has bipolar, he going through all of that because if you look at um his childhood and everything that he went through it was always moving it was poor this that whoopty whoopty whoop a kid that gone through all that can be bipolar like i believe that he could have been we would never know but it's possible and then plus when he got um the first time he got shot of course, like I said, he's always going, he's already going through a lot. And to find out that a person that was close to him, that he assumed or thought set him up and got him shot. Now he's dealing with that. I understand why he was angry because it's like he was already dealing with a lot. And then y'all set me up, which again, we confirm, we know now that he wasn't set up at least by Biggie and Bad Boy and all that kind of stuff. So... He was angry. That's why he put out hit, hit um hit him up. That man was angry. He was dealing with a lot, so he needed to get it out. Whether I agree with the song or not, I understand why he did it. So it would make sense that he may have been bi bipolar. I mean, look at uh DMX recipes DMX, but he went through a lot and he kind of displayed some of the same, you know, same behaviors and all that kind of stuff. So. If they came out and said Tupac was bipolar, I would definitely believe it. And I can see the people or hear the people right now. What are you talking about? You just disrespecting our legend. No, I'm not disrespecting. I love Pac. And which is why I'm saying this. And I, I just want people to be aware because I, I always talk about mental health. I'm a mental health advocate. I go to mental health issues myself. So watching the documentary, I can see it. I can just... Like I said, he was going through a lot. So up until he died. 
but that was a great documentary it was great i recommend everybody check it out it's on hulu it, it was great did you um did you watch it steven right thug life but <laughs> until i got that thug life chatted on my chest tell me can you feel me mm. just be the first to blast remember kato no longer no longer with hold on no longer with us he deceased call up a siren he's now rest in peace remember me anyway um yeah I, again i recommend watching dear mama again you will be emotional at the end especially at least with me once you hear that da -da 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 -da, i lose it I, I get goosebumps like i'm getting goosebumps now just like on my legs like ooh. but yeah now another thing that i watch was you people I laughed throughout the whole thing because what's funny is so if y'all don't know i work at amazon right and one of the things because it's been tough at work lately i was like lord if you give me vto i will go home and i will watch you people i got vto and i watched it and i do not regret it at all um it has lauren london and jonah hill and I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's basically about them getting it together. But both sides of their family had some racial things. It was like, it was a lot of racial tension within the uh, movie, but it was funny though. But it also discussed some things that needs to be talking about, um, talked about because I'm not against interracial um, relationships at all. I don't care if you white, black, this, that, and the other. I prefer to date a black woman um of course i'm open to dating like asian white you know all that kind of stuff but i prefer black and this is the reason why i'm kind of moving away from the movie but at the same time this is the things that they discuss it's like yeah i again i'm not against interracial relationship marriages and all that kind of stuff but there is a discussion that's important it was like okay it's like for example i always say i can date a white person but it's like how would your family take it? Are they racist? Because if we have a child, then that's their our child's grandparents. And were they racist? I don't want my child around that. And it, of course, there's always discussion about you know um, the struggles that that. And the funny thing is, okay, so Lauren London, her family, which her dad is um, Eddie Murphy, and her mom was Neil Long. Um, what I was ready to say, I forgot what I was ready to say, but you know, they're black, and then Jonah Hill's um family, they're Jewish. And I do I really need to explain the rest? I'm having a problem finding the words I want to say, but of course, there's tension there. They talked about the Holocaust, slavery, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to spoil it for y'all. But it, <laughs> and the funny thing is, within the movie, there was pand, there was a lot of pandering. But you have to see it. When I say pandering, it was like it's 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 hard to describe. But there was a lot of pandering in there. What I mean by that, not like an agenda of the movie, but like, for example, there was this one scene where Jonah brung um Lord London home to his parents. And his mom was just pandering. What I mean by that, she was talking about, oh, I love black people. Oh, black lives matter. That's needed. Uh, yes, I'm with y'all struggle against the police. And this, I'm like, stop pandering. And the funny thing is, after the mom left, because Jonah um, took his mom to the side. Now, the dad, dad was pandering. He was like, I like NWA. <laughs> He was talking about exhibit. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Stop pandering. But it was a really good movie, especially at the end. It got a little fairy tale at the end, but of course it is a comedy. But y'all should definitely go check it out. Did you um watch that movie, Steven? 
Right, because you brown, so <laughs> you brown, you're a brown squirrel, but you know there's also black squirrels out there too. So <laughs> get yourself a black squirrel, Steve, and get yourself a black woman squirrel because she's gonna um you get home after working all day and she's gonna be cooking all those nuts, have dinner ready for you. Man, it's gonna be nuts. <laughs> what is true? I mean anyway, um, I love you, Steven, but <laughs> I have some liquid death with me, right? Let me tell you, home. And I'm having a squirrel moment. I'm basically done with the um you people talk anyway. But um, let me tell you something right now. Again, I'm I'm drinking liquid death. If y'all see me stuttering all over the place, that's because it's been a while since I've reported the podcast. But then again, it's called squirrel moments. So I'm gonna be all over the place. But I love liquid death. That's why when I get to a certain spot. I want a liquid death sponsorship. That and Blue Chew. I want Blue Chew. I want a Blue Chew sponsorship because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. Um, I've been listening to Brilliant Idiots and I've been listening to Flagrant 2, which Flagrant 2 has Andrew Schultz, Kaz, and Akash on there, which is mostly a sports call, um, podcast. I don't really keep up with sports, but it's still funny. And of course, Brilliant Idiots with Charlemagne and Andrew Schultz. And one of their big, biggest sponsors is Blue Chew. Get that dick hard. <laughs> I want a Blue Chew sponsorship. Man, the way to be talking about um, Blue Chew. Imagine, look, 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 look. You got your Blue Chew, right? You eat your Blue Chew. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. After that, you need to um, hydrate yourself. That's when you get the liquid death. This is why they need to give me a sponsorship once I get to that level, because I know I need to um earn it first. <laughs> I know I need to earn it first, but let me get that sponsorship. Oh, I'm going to have fun presenting that, um those products. Oh, and don't let me get a Manscaped neither. Look, 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 look. You get the Manscaped, shave your balls. After that, you get the Blue Chew. Do what you got to do. Hydrate yourself with some liquid death. There we go. Let me get all three of those sponsorships. <laughs> Shave your balls, get your dick hard, hydrate. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, I thought I heard something. But, um, look, Steven need that blue chew so that way he can go nuts in the Badusi. <laughs> Steven, you get more than me. But anyway, <laughs> I've been dry. I've been dry for a long time. I ain't afraid to admit that. Sure, I'm human at the end of the day. I have bad social skills. But other than that, <laughs> yo, when I tell y'all I have fun doing this, I have fun doing this. I I really have fun doing this. That's why I'm pushing now towards a thousand subscribers and trying to be a full time content creator and all this kind of stuff. Because I really love doing this. I really do. So imagine me making money off this. I'd be incentivized to do it. Well, anyway, that's how I got for as long as far as the catch or go. Things I've been doing, things I've been keeping myself entertained with. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get to the stories. Let's get to the stories. I don't have a lot today because I knew within the first portion of the um, podcast, I was going to talk about a lot of stuff because we're like 30 minutes in now. Well, over 30 minutes in. But let's get to the stories today. Now, speaking of Starfield, again, y'all know I've been keeping up with that game for a while now, and Starfield is really what got me to this point now. I should say the game not even out yet, and Starfield already doing a lot. Man, imagine when I start streaming that game. And I know I'm going to be streaming that game a lot because I'm going to spend a lot of time on that game. I know I am. But anyway, um, you know, I've been keeping up with Starfield, all the news. Like, every time I see some news about Starfield, I bookmark it. Because when I prepare the podcast, every time I see a news story that interests me, I always save. Even though I don't talk about it, talk about it on the podcast, I at least save it so that way, you know, I have that story. Now, you know what Bethesda games such as Skyrim, Oblivion. All the fallout you know the modern community goes crazy on those so because this is a bethesda game of course it's probably gonna have some modding on here and tom uh todd how will discuss um some of the features as far as modding um and this story comes from vgcharts.com um 
when was this posted? Four days ago. So, 29, 28, 27, 26. So, June 26. And it reads as follows. It reads as follows. And if you are um, watching the video version, you get to see the, um, the article. Anyway, Todd Howard. Starfield is going to be a modest paradise. But that's just Todd Howard in an interview with Kind of Funny stated the upcoming space RPG Starfield will be a modest paradise, of course. Bethesda has been open to the modern community for over 20 years, which Howard said is part of the company's DNA. Yep. I think Starfield is gonna, going to be kind of a modest paradise, say Howard. It's part of our DNA here. We've been doing it for over 20 years in our community around that. We've usually been classy single player that has been our community and people are still modding our games and playing them so we're doing a lot of it i think one of the things that now mind you i haven't read the story yet i read like maybe the first two sentences i think one of the things that i'll call out is it's important for us not just to enable it but but to participate to make it easy for them to make this where they can make not make it not just a hobby but a career Oh, I love Todd Howard and his vision. We've had a lot of great success there, so looking forward to what everyone can do with Starfield. Starfield launches on September 6th. Yep. And, you know, I'm not really in the modding scene, at least not yet, but I want to see what kind of mods people do in Starfield. And that's why I'm, I'm having trouble deciding what platform I'm going to play Starfield on. I want to play on the Series X. But because of modding and all that kind of stuff, I kind of want to play on PC. I could technically play on both, but I'll be playing two separate stories, which is fine. Which is fine. Now that I think about it, it'll be fine. Imagine you uh, have a Star Wars mod on um 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 a Star Wars mod on Star Starfield. Woo! Imagine that. Imagine that. And then somebody out there gonna make a Death Star. Look, somebody gonna make an X-Wing mod and all that kind of stuff. It's gonna... <laughs> somebody gonna make uh, somebody gonna make some great stuff on there. Somebody's gonna make some great stuff on there. I, I can't wait. And then um I forgot what I was ready to say. Just know I'm ready for all the mods by Todd. And the fact they say they're participating. They know their market. I will say Bethesda, Broken Bethesda has always been smart about their um I call Bethesda Broken Bethesda. I'm gonna tell y'all why in a second. But they've been pretty good about the modern community. And the reason why I call Bethesda Broken Bethesda is because their games usually come out broken. But in a I don't wanna say a good way, but it just it has that Bethesda. That's what makes Bethesda charming. That's that Bethesda charm. Is that that but there's a charm that's what makes it you know makes Skyrim and all of them pretty good because of the of the um you know the many things that you could do in there that 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 charm. What you think, Steven? What you think about the modding of um of Starfield? Do you know how to um install mods and all that stuff? Oh, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay, I'll figure it out. It's probably, I ain't going to say easy, but it's probably not going to be that hard. But anyway, moving on. Now, again, I'm a sci-fi nerd. I love Star I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. Now, again, I was speaking earlier about setting up mods and all that stuff. If y'all know, don't know, I'm in the field of IT. That's what I went to school for. I'm in the field of IT, right? Well, I just finished school. So, um, I love computers and all this kind of stuff. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, because this next story is very important to me. Now, this next story is discussing BioWare leaving o Old Republic, Star Wars The Old Republic. If you don't know, Star Wars The Old Republic is an MMO that's PC only. And the reason why I say PC only, because KOTOR 1 and 2 went to the console in PC. And this game is the reason why I got into IT and computers and all this stuff. But before we go that far, let's go ahead and read the um the article. This article is from GamingBible.com. It was released on June 28th, and it reads as follows. BioWare moves on from Star Wars to Old Republic amid layoffs. 
it's never not oh come on why well, i ain't scrolling hold on it's never nice when we hear job losses in the latest two phase cruel cuts of the star wars to over public developers at bioware released in 2011 for pc star wars to over public is an mmo rpg that has been going strong for well over the decade Star Wars The Old Republic tells the story of a tenuous peace between the reemergent Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic. For added reference, this PC exclusive MMO RPG is set 300 years after the events of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and 3,600 years before the Star Wars movies. Sadly, even good things can't last forever. And while BioWare has stated that it's in the development of the MMO RPG anytime soon, it doesn't look too promising when it's talented employees face layoffs as reported by Eurogamer, while bioware is no longer working on star wars the old republic duties will now be handed over to broadsword swordswood broadsword online games a studio that has developed much lesser known rpg mmo rpg called ultima online while many employees will have the opportunity to take up new roles with publisher electronic arts some will face being cut altogether, and the letter published on the bi official <laughs> and the letter <laughs> and the letter published on the official Bioware website. The general manager of Bioware, Gary McKay, broke the news. McKay explained that while most of the current team will be invited to a company broadsword or broadsword online games to support Star Wars over public, fortunately, not every role will make the move. Uh, hold on. I need to drink some wine. All these damn ads popping up. Mm. Anyway, this is the hardest part of the transition, and these decisions were not lightly made lightly. He continued. We are, of course, doing everything we can to support the affected team members who have an opportunity to find new roles within EA. In addition, we're aware that the team members who are being asked to move to a new studio will also be adapting to change. And we will be working with Broadsword to make the transition as comfortable as possible. Uh, McKay also mentioned that Broadsword will be working tirelessly to ensure these worlds and these communities continue to thrive and grow the MMO, the grow. The MMO RPG and exciting new features playing that the team is not quite ready to talk about yet. And yeah, that's basically it. It's more stuff on there, but it's basically repeating and saying, saying the same thing. Let me tell you why this kind of, I ain't gonna say it scares me, but it worries me a bit. Once you start having that stuff happen, mind you, this game came out in 2011. It's been active for over 10 years. So that means when stuff starts happening like that, it's only a matter of time before the game shut down because again, it's an MMO. Now let me tell you why this sticks out to me. This game is the reason why I got into IT. And this is what I mean by that. I've always been in the computers, but this game solidified it. And this is what I mean. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I played KOTOR 1 and 2. When this one was announced, I like, I want to play it. But it was only available for, P available for PC. So I was like, I don't have no PC. And of course, buying one from, you know, buying one fully built is expensive as hell. So I was like, Okay, let me learn how to build my own PC. I literally built my first PC because of Star Wars The Old Republic. I literally sat back, did some studying, did the work, all that stuff just to play this game. And you know the fucked up and the messed up thing about it is? I haven't played this game in a while. After I built the PC, I did put a lot of, I ain't gonna say a lot of hours, but I put a decent amount of time on this. But ever since, I, I feel like ever since I built my PC, I've been playing this game once a year. This game is the reason why I got into PC. This game alone was the reason why I got into PC. If it wasn't for this game, I wouldn't have gotten to PC. I wouldn't have gotten into IT. I wouldn't have. This game will make, like I said, I've always been good with computers and all that kind of stuff, but this game solidified it because again, this is the reason why I built my PC. And now this worries me because like, this is the reason why I built my PC and you mean to tell me they say it's not shutting down anytime soon, but you never know with these kind of things. You just never know. There's a lot of things going in the air because Disney, of course, is making a lot of cuts. They're making a lot of cuts. This is one of them. 
because if you don't know, Disney owns Star Wars. They even Disney started making cuts on um, on Marvel. You know, they're taking some of the shows off of Disney um, Plus and all that kind of stuff. So they're doing this to you know make cutbacks and all this kind of stuff. Hopefully, it doesn't shut down anytime soon. But this is going to encourage me to start playing this again on and off camera. So, like, I haven't even beat the because I'm doing the Jedi Knight um playthrough. And I haven't even beaten that yet. Mind you, there's three, four other classes on each side. So that means I could beat the game eight, you know, eight times different. So that's what kind of, I'm just a little worried. That's all. Because again, I, I did a lot, I put a lot of effort to make sure I can play this game. And then once I got the opportunity, I stopped playing it. So, but yeah, what you think about this, Steven? Right. It's scary. It's looking scary. I'm scared. Steven, hold me. Please hold me. Oh, you're supposed to be my boy. You're supposed to be able to help me out. Come on. All I need you to do is hold me. Come on. Let me, come on. Let me hold your hand. Come on. Oh, thank you, Steven. Anyway. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Look, 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 look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I appreciate, I'm going to keep saying this. I appreciate everybody that's stuck it through. You know, cause I'm 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 goofy and I'm corny. That is that is, I, and I'm confident about that. I'm goofy and I'm corny, and I don't care what people say. People could be like, "Oh my God, why are you doing that?" Anyway, um, oh shoot, I messed up on something. I'm trying to bring um. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. I appreciate all of y'all because y'all could have been like, what the fuck is this guy doing? What is he talking about? You know, I'm going to click on in the next video, next podcast, whatever. But anybody that sticks around, I love y'all. I really love y'all. But anyway, this is going to be our last, um, this is going to be our last story before we get to the IRL portion of the, um, of the podcast. Um, now, speaking of PC, again, I'm not super heavy on playing PC, but I do definitely play PC. And let me tell you something real quick. There are 10 things. Mm. Sorry, y'all. With this air quality, you know, with the Canada fires and all that kind of stuff, it's even reached Virginia, which I have beef with Virginia, but we're going to get there in a second. There are 10 things you should never say to a PC gamer. This article, this fun article is from Kotaku.com. Um, when did this story come out? Or when did this? It was published yesterday, so it was published on the 29th. And it reads as follows 10 things you should never say to a PC gamer. Trade carefully, console owners. It's time for some gaming hardware snobbery. <laughs> anyway, uh, certified PC gamers tend to think they are the best of the pack, but our superior hardware comes at a price. Sure. Part of that is the hundreds of dollars of upfront costs, which can also, which can sometimes make console games look simpler and more appealing. But mostly what I'm talking about how the community treats PC games like elitists. Um, what, just because our games run better than yours? To make amends with gamers at large, I, vi I devise a list of things you should never say to the PC community so we can all learn to get along. Please know that this is all good in good fun. All hardware is valid and this, <laughs> this article is by Joshua Chu. Anyway, let's get to the next one. I brought my PC pre-built. If you say this to a PC gamer, you will absolutely hear about how much time and money you could have saved by just building the damn thing yourself. Like I said, that's why I didn't, I didn't, I didn't purchase a PC upright because I knew that shit was gonna be more expensive. My first PC, I think I spent like five, six hundred dollars on, which is still a lot. But usually, when you get a pre-built, pre-built pre-built pc is in the thousands Ooh, i'm starting to get congested but it's in the thousands where again and again that was a different time but i spent like 600 dollars, i believe so it was definitely much cheaper anyway let's get to the next um let's get to the next one there are no differences between the console game and the pc game before i even go any farther there are differences. There are differences. Well, console, well, console is getting more powerful now. 
while on consoles it was locked at a certain like fps and all that kind of stuff pc you can upgrade it even more but anyway let's get to it between lower game price points better graphic options more robust 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 mod support just to name a few things this is simply not true i can't even see what the difference what difference 60 frames per second or 4k resolution be. is the difference and at first i was on the camp of what's the difference i don't care this that and whoop de whoop de whoop ever since i got in the pc i noticed the difference and i became spoiled like i always say the industry standard needs to be 1080 60. right I don't really care too much about 4K, but I definitely see the difference. And now, like I said, I became sport. Like when I got my Series X, I literally bought a 4K TV just to get the full experience out of it. And the funny thing is, my Series X and I ain't even plugged up to my um 4K TV. It's actually plugged up to my um my PC right here. And then my Series S is with the 4K. <laughs> now, granted, that still get what is it? 1440p i believe yeah and it still got 60 frames now what's funny is i know people are going to say right now you say that 1080 60 is the standard but starfield is going to be 1080 30. let me um let me address that real quick yes now i strongly believe that hold on i strongly believe that the industry industry standard should be 1080 60 and i still stand by that however because of how big Starfield is going to be and all this kind of stuff, I can take 30 frames per second because it's like, it's, it's such a big game. Something got to get cut. And they say they want everything to work well and all that stuff. So for console, console is going to be locked at 30 frames. And then later on, they can do an update where 60 frames work. And that's going to be the difference between the console version and the PC version. PC is not going to be locked at 60. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's just gonna, you can go up to 60, but it won't be like a solid 60. It's probably gonna be jumping up and down. But anyway, next. All right. I'll just wait for the Switch version. My brother in Christ, have you heard of Steam or the Steam Deck? What if you didn't have uh, to wait years for a point of the most interesting games around i want to i do want to get a steam deck it's going to be a while but i do want to get a steam deck um if nothing else just to do an unboxing i'm very expensive when it comes to investing in content <laughs> i use a keyboard instead of a keyboard and mouse okay auto aim you don't want to pull this out in your overwatch tool call of duty match it'll bring out some bad characters yeah let me tell you something real quick I don't mind using keyboard and mouse because I do use keyboard and mouse for certain PC games. But let me tell you, if you train yourself, if you train yourself for uh, PC gaming, um, not PC, not just PC gaming, keyboard and mouse, you will be on fire. I play some people that do keyboard and mouse, especially with Halo, because of course they got the crossplay. Woof. I couldn't do it because you got to be fast paced. And, I, and like when I'm playing the keyboard, I have to think a bit. Anyway, next one. Any keyboard is fine, to be honest. The second top reason anyone builds a computer to eventually get into mechanical keyboard. And let me tell you, the clickety clack of every switch of every switch you can pick makes a huge difference. Even if it's only in how loud my typing will sound. Hold on. Y'all hear that? I used to have a clickety clackety. Well, I ain't gonna say clickety clackety. I had a wireless keyboard that was kind of like a mechanical keyboard, but of course, because it's wireless, after a while, it just kept acting up, so I had to switch over. Plus, I don't really like loud keyboards. I mean, yes, it's cool, but after a while, you just clickety clackety clackety clickety clackety clackety who did the hot and the hen on the hunt? Hun on the Rest in peace, take off. But, um, yeah. How many launches do you use? There's only Steam, Xbox Game Pass, JLC Galaxy, Epic Game Store, <laughs> Battle.net, Orange and the Rockstar Games Launcher, the Windows Store, Riot Client, You Play, the Bethesda Launcher, Ichigo. Mm, maybe console games have the right idea after all. Ooh, hold on. Ooh, excuse me. Anyway, let's play a co-op, a couch co-op game together. That one, now that one's funny. 
most likely the answer will just be no since local multiplayer isn't as common around these parts so you better just off not asking. Plus, how am I supposed to sit in my gamer chair that's designed to look like a race car while using the top of the line mouse if we're in front of a TV? And then, can I play this game on a Mac? I could Google that for you, you filthy Mac users. Except you, Whoopi Goldberg. We love you. <laughs> now, listen to this one. PC ports suck. I agree with that especially and it's funny you got a picture of the last of us over here that last of us 2 port was horrible from what i saw the truth is the truth but it's not nice to say it. lately it's more common for a triple a game to release in a somewhat broken somewhat broken state on pc than it is for things to just work <laughs> oh man and that's all of them i thought that was funny so i just wanted to include that in there but it's true all of that is true all the launches i have three four launches installed on like i had to delete some because i was no lo no longer playing those games that require those launches so i deleted some so and then like the crazy thing is my biggest launcher is the one for star citizen so <laughs> all that was true what you think about that um steven you say you want me to help you build a pc so i help you as long as you got the funds me pay you moving on <laughs> I love you, Stephen. Anyway, now we're in the IRL portion of the um podcast, which IRL says for in, in real life. And this is the portion when I talk, like, my, where I present a news story, something like that, that deals with more real life stuff. I mean, granted, those other stories are real life stuff, but this one is more like can affect you in a real big way. And this one, this particular story that I got, I have beef with the state of Virginia. I have beef with the state of Virginia. And the reason why I have beef with the state of Virginia, because they're telling me, I ain't gonna say telling me, but they're preventing me from beating my meat in Virginia. <laughs> I'm so serious, y'all. Y'all don't believe me? This story comes from WRIC.com and it reads as for Pornhub blocks access in Virginia. Before I go any farther, well, actually, it's going to be pretty clean. So I was going to say certain people shouldn't listen to this, but anyway, at least the story. I don't know. Pornhub blocks access to Virginia over new age verification law. When was this published? A day ago. So we'll say the 29th. Richmond, Virginia. The oh, Anyway. Well, what am I doing? The adult content website Pornhub, one of the most visited sites in the world, <laughs> has blocked users of Virginia over the state's new age verification law. The law taking effect July 1st, which is tomorrow, or, well, by the time this be released, the law will take place, will require websites with pornographic content to verify users of Virginia are at least 18 years old before they access the site's content. The law proposed by Republican State Senate uh, Senator William M. Stanley Jr., also known as Franklin, sailed through the Virginia General Assembly. Multiple efforts to reach MindGeek, the parent company of uh, Pornhub and other adult content websites, on Wednesday and Thursday was uns were unsuccessful. But the message on the Thursday on the site Thursday details the reason behind the move. The safety of our users is one of our biggest concerns. We believe that the best and most effective solution for protecting children and adults alike is to identify users by their device and allow age, allow access to age-restricted materials and websites based on that identification point her role. Until a real solution is offered, we have made the difficult decision to completely disable access to our website in Virginia. Mm, 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 mm. Once the law takes effect, the adult websites need to set up a method to verify a user's age, such as requiring people to submit digital copies of their identification online scans or through a particular system. Sites that don't comply could be open to a civil lawsuit, civil lawsuits in Virginia. I'm looking at the camera right now. What the are you fucking serious face? I still got that look on my face for all my audio listeners. I still have that. <laughs> The governor remains committed to protecting Virginia's children, yeah, the children, from dangerous material on the internet, a spokesman for Governor Glenn Young can say in a statement. The Free Speech Coalition, a trade association for the adult industry and others, filed a lawsuit challenging a similar law that recently went into effect in Utah. It's unclear whether the, the group plans to file a legal challenge to Virginia's law. 
It's not a matter of if these laws will be ruled unconstitutional, unconstitutional, but when Mike Stable, Free Speech Coalition spokesperson, told 8 News today. Stable also raised concerns over the websites that won't follow the new law, noting that many porn sites are owned by companies overseas that can skirt civil lawsuits filed in the U.S. Utah and Virginia are not alone. Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi have passed similar laws, and several others have introduced age verification bills. The Free Speech Coalition filed a federal lawsuit against Louisiana's law on June 20th. Do, do, do. Alison Bowden, the Free Speech Coalition's executive director, sent a letter to Governor Glenn Youngkin urging him to veto Stanley's bill. Bowden wrote that the group supports efforts to protect young people from material that is age inappropriate or harmful, but listed issues it had with the bill. Adult content, even material harmful for minors, is First Amendment protected speech and the Supreme Court has ruled repeatedly that restrictions on its productions and consumption face the highest legal bar. Strict scrutiny, Bowden wrote to Youngkin on March 27th. Stable told 8 News that the group also reached out to every state lawmaker, but that coalition, but that coalition heard silence. I'm doing the, are you fucking serious face again? You know what's funny? Let me tell y'all a story real quick. And yes, I'm getting a little TMI, but it is what it is. So the last few weeks, of course, I've been going to the hub. And I saw the thing pop up, but I never read it. I always just skipped it. I'm not thinking too much about it. But the other day, I went to the site, and it was like, we block access. Like, what? And kind of found out this law is in the state of Virginia. So now there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of sites that say, hey, you're in Virginia. We're not going to act, let you access. I think this is bullshit. I think this is stupid. And the reason why, because Virginia, the state of Virginia wants you to submit your ID into these porn sites. What? And they say they're using it to protect the children. What? Where are the parents at? The parents should be um taking a look at, they should be the one monitoring their children. I don't want to hear about it for the children. Porn has been around for years, for ages. Even when it wasn't on the internet, it was through tapes. And as a child, I found tapes. I found DVDs. The DVDs with the white cover on there. It ain't got nothing on there, just a white cover. I put it in there and Pinky's shaking ass on there. <laughs> yo, yo, ever since I moved, I've been talking dirty. And I don't care neither because it's the freedom. But anyway, what am I talking about? The point of the fact is they need to retract this um law because it's so stupid. And it's, I feel like it's, I ain't going to say unsafe, but it's like now you're uploading your ID to a porn website. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. It's time to subscribe to somebody's OnlyFans. <laughs> I be damned. <laughs> Oh man, but this is ridiculous, y'all. And this is why local elections are important. There are some people out there that only participate in presidential elections. No, your local elections are much more important because those are the ones who put the senators, you know, in the positions and who decides what's going on in your local laws because state laws are much more stricter than federal laws. So, I'm not trying to be woke here or anything like that, but participating in elections are important. If you have the right to vote, you better use that right. Because this is this is the reason why voting is important. Now we can't watch porn in Virginia. Virginia is about to be a very pissed off state because we can't beat our meat. When our girl is acting up and she don't want to do it, we got to do it ourselves. Or if you're lonely like I am, if you're lonely like I am, and you can't always get a woman to help you bust a nut, we need to go to the hub, get that lotion, and relieve all our stress because all the thing that's going on between the world that's burning, me working at a shitty job, and everything that's going on in the world with the economy, with the housing market, with jobs being harder to get jobs, gas going up, um, inflation, eggs cost a goddamn arm and leg. It's ten dollars for eggs now, probably in the state of Hawaii. But yeah, for all that is going on, we need to relieve stress. And now you're going to make us even more stressed out. 
Someone else beat on meats for therapeutic reasons. Steven be busting nuts on him. He'll be eating them busting nuts. He needs that. <laughs> what, Steven? You do? You about to go nuts because you can't bust a nut. <laughs> Yo, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. That's some bullshit. I want to watch porn beat my meat, y'all. <laughs> TMI, I'm sorry for my parents or my family members who be watching and listening to this, but I'm not sorry as well. But <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all so much. Talking about my family, all, everybody that watches that support me because, oh my gosh, y'all could turn away at any time. And I wouldn't even blame y'all because I might turn away from me. But come on now, I need my porn. Do y'all not see how stressed out I am? <laughs> Yo, I need help. I need help. I need my porn. I need to watch Lacey Duvall. <laughs> the start of us. <laughs> yes, I'm revealing a lot by myself, but shoot. I... Who doesn't watch porn? And if you don't watch porn, it's cool. But you must be getting a lot in because. Come on now. I want my days where I can be in my bed with the lotion beside me and a napkin or my nut sock. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. Bring porn back to Virginia. Marijuana legal now, but y'all gonna make porn illegal? Well, it's not making porn illegal, but y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all give us one stress reliever but take away the other. At least at least with this one, this one is free. The other one, you gotta pay for and go through a whole bunch of methods just to make sure you can get it legal. I'm going in today. <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. Now, the next portion of this um, podcast is called SMU or Squirrels, Squirrel Moments University. This is the... I need some point. <laughs> this is a portion of the podcast where I feel like I can give y'all something that can help y'all in life, whether it's, you know, resources or advice or just, I feel like something that we can all use, that everybody can use. Doesn't matter what age you are. I feel like it can help everyone. And what I mean by this, like, for example, there was one episode I was talking about 401k. Right. And if you don't know what a 401k is, it's basically a retirement fund where where that's usually through your job, where you could put a set amount in there and usually your job would match it. So let's just say it goes by percentage, but for the sake of argument, let's say you put five dollars in there, your job will match it. And now you got ten dollars in there. Right. And when I discussed that. My grandma actually watched it and she told me later on, like, I didn't even, mind you, my grandma's like in her 80s, I believe. She said she didn't even know what a 401k is until she saw that video of the podcast of it. So I know that my messages, I know that the lessons that I give, all that kind of stuff is getting out to people and I know it's important. So with that being said, today's lesson is checking your benefits. And what I mean by checking your benefits, I'm talking about your benefits at your job. Now, remember before what I said, the 401k is your retirement fund. Your 401k is one benefit, right? Here's another benefit. And I'm going to get deeper regarding your benefits because they're surface level, you know, like insurance, all that kind of stuff. But there's even deeper. So, of course, you have your 401k, which I need to start mine again. But um, your 401k and, of course, your health insurance. Health insurance is important, especially for somebody like me that goes to therapy, you know, take medicine and all that kind of stuff. Like, I go to therapy monthly. So, and, of course, I go to a psychiatrist as well for my medication. If I had to pay out of pocket, I would be out here crazy on these streets. <laughs> no, but it's important. And then usually there's a lot of people. When you look at, I keep clipping the mic, but... 
when it comes to health insurance, a lot of people don't know about health insurance. And what I mean by that is the detail that goes behind it. People don't know about deductibles. People don't know. I mean, a lot of people know what copay is, which your copay is how much you're responsible for. But a lot of people do not know about deductibles. And basically what your deductible is, is just like similar to the car insurance. Basically, it's the amount that you have to pay out of pocket before the insurance kick in, right? Now, I remember at one point, I had a huge deductible just before I switched to my current insurance. But I remember my deductible was over $1,000. Actually, it was like around two, three thousand dollars $3,000. So imagine I have to pay out of pocket until I reach that amount. Mind you, for one of my doctors, it's like over $200 a visit. That's why I kind of got behind on my medical bills. But if you can, when you're looking at your insurance, when you're looking at all your benefits, try to get the one with the lowest deductible or that middle ground. Because the lower your deductible is, the more you reach it, reach it faster and the insurance can start kicking in. Like my current insurance that I have right now, I think it's like a five, a three between four to five hundred dollar deductible which is still a big amount but it's nowhere near big as three thousand so two doctor visits i met my deductible already and now i don't have to pay as much out of pocket because that's what kind of uh what's hurting me because i was paying out of pocket for a lot of stuff not only just for doctor visits but also prescriptions as well now that being said prescriptions kind of work a little differently because depending on what tier because there's tiers of medication like depending on what the medication is and what they cover. If the medication is covered, you might still pay less for your medication, depending on what tier it is. And then certain medications will go towards your deductible. It depends on, there's a lot that go behind insurance. Cause I work for two insurance. Well, I work for a health company, a health insurance company and a car insurance company. And it works pretty similar, but make sure if you can, and yes, your premium, which is, the amount that you pay for health insurance is going to be higher the more lower your deductible is. But trust me, it's worth it. It is worth it. So check out your health insurance. Also, another benefit is that you, a lot of jobs have, which a lot of people are not aware of, is your EAP, which stands for Employee Assistance Program. And what that is for, like if somebody's going through something or anything of that nature, is resources to help you get through that, such as legal advice, counseling, in which a lot of EAPs, what they do is they give you five to six free counseling section um, sessions. And usually the way that they do it, at least with my job, or at least one of my old job i know i'm all over the place whatever your health insurance cover whichever doctor they cover or therapist they cover they'll give you free sessions i've used this benefit so many times i haven't paid for therapy in a long time i know i was just talking about going to therapy on a monthly basis but i haven't paid for therapy in a long time because of that benefit i have not paid for therapy in a while and thank god goodness because i don't know what i would do so if anybody if you go into some mental health issues or anything like that go through your eap get those you know get those free counseling sessions and not only they do counseling sessions as well and therapy all that stuff they also got help for like real estate stuff if you're going to do like if you're adopting your child a child or anything of that nature they also have benefits for that benefits for that resources for all that um another benefit of course like through your job let me try to think of another one um of course you have oh here's the important one because i had to go through this recently when you get go, you know, you get your benefits, they always put on there what is called short term and long term disability or short term STD. <laughs> Keep it burning. But anyway, <laughs> and what that is, let's just say, for example, you get injured or something happens, you get sick. What that does is, and of course, leave as well. They kind of correlate with each other. And this is what I mean in a second. So, Let's go to leave real quick. So when you go on leave, if you don't know what leave is, it's basically 
let's just say for example, right? You got to be away from your job for a while. Let's say a week or two. What leave does is what leave does is protect your position at your job while you're away. So that way you won't get fired or anything like that. So that's what leave is. Now, depending on what job you work at, there's different types of leaves. There's paid leave, there's unpaid leave, which most leaves are unpaid, right? So keep that in mind. Now, again, most leaves are unpaid depending on where you're working at, but they're short-term and long-term disability. So let's just say, again, you're going through health issues, you're going through surgery or anything like that. Well, short-term and long disability does is it gives you, your job will still pay you when you're out. And usually I think it's like, I want to say 60 to 70% of your usual income. And which might, while that might not be a lot, you know, I'd rather have some money coming in and no money coming in. You know, you might have to cut back some, on some stuff, but at least you still have money coming in. You can at least pay your rent and all that kind of stuff. So if, if you ever get hurt outside or you get sick or you going through mental health issues, because this is what I had to do. I was going through some mental health issues with my job. So I took leave, but I also, my doctor fell out the paperwork for the short-term disability. So that way, when I wasn't working, I still have money coming in, not a lot, but it was money coming in so I could continue paying my bills and all that kind of stuff. So, of course, you have short-term, long-term disability. Um, trying to think of some others. Oh, there's a lot of jobs out there as well, well where um, you get a lot of discounts, too. Like, you get discounts for movie tickets, um, amusement parks, such as Disneyland and Disney World, um, all that kind of stuff. And while you may overlook that, if you really plan the trip, you know, also discounts for plane tickets and hotels and all that stuff. 20%. It might not be 20. People don't realize 20% can be a lot if you if you think about it. Let's just say a plane ticket costs $100. I know they're much more than that. 20% off, your plane ticket is now $80. And that extra 20 could be used towards like food or gas or something. You know, something of that nature. So let's see what else other benefits. I can't think of. It, 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 it's a lot of it. Oh, 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 oh. This is going to be the last one. Schooling. There are jobs now that will actually pay for your schooling, either a portion of it, all of it, most of it, whatever. A lot of jobs nowadays encourage you to go to school, and they will pay for it. If it's not all of it, at least some, most, whatever. If you're going to school, look at your job benefits and see what kind of benefits they have as far as like paying for your school and you know some jobs might be like if you go to this particular school we'll pay for everything you know we'll pay for textbooks all that kind of stuff look at that look at the benefits for schooling because that's what my mom did um let me see because i helped her set it up like let's just say her school loans were 250 a month her job We'll put like $50 towards that payment. So now she only got to pay 200. You might be thinking, what, what? I want the whole thing being paid. You got to get what you can get. $50 off that shoe. That's groceries. Not a lot of groceries because of inflation, but that I'm, all I'm saying is that's money that you didn't have before that you now have. That is that's something that you didn't have before and that you now have. So take advantage of that. All these benefits, and there's probably way more out there that I can't, who I'm getting congested, that are very beneficial. Every time I get a new job, I look at all my benefits, especially now. I look at all my benefits. What can I use? What can I use that can help me? You know, um, again, what is leave, short-term disability, long-term disability, uh, vacation. 401k um also going back to the eap employee assistance program then let's just say you try to buy a house or anything of that nature they will help you there's the eap will help you out with that process too because you know the house the house buying process it's oh i watched my mom go through that my friend also went through that they say it's a process um but yeah just look at all your benefits 
you know, just just do that for your sake. And also, of course, if you got kids, that would definitely help out too. Um, what you think, Steven? Do you have benefits? Oh yeah, that's right. You unemployed. I don't pay you, but <laughs> don't worry. You, I mean, you're just an intern right now, but eventually, I'm going to pay you. <laughs> Please don't report me to the business bureau and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> No, but you're an intern. <laughs> I know, Steven. I know, Steven. But I love you. I love you very much. But anyway, that's all I have for... um. That's the end of Squirrel Moments University. That's everything that I have. Just check your benefits and all that stuff. Just see what you got. But yeah, that's, just go- that's going to be the end of the podcast, y'all. I appreciate everybody that's listening on the audio version, which is available on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, google podcast and i know there's some other platforms that are going to be on there i appreciate all y'all for um listening also watching the video version which is on youtube.com slash iurban tv i appreciate all of y'all follow all my social medias um everything is iurban tv again instagram twitter tiktok kick youtube all of that everything is iurban tv um and also again you're not obligated to do this but if you want to financially support the channel, financially support this movie, the content creation, all that kind of stuff, my cash app is dollar sign iUrban I Urban TV. Again, you're not obligated to, but if you do it, I appreciate it. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, What else we got? Uh, shoot, I am drawing a blank right now. Um, Oh, speaking of the audio version, um... By listening to the audio version, I get some financial gain. Not a lot. I wonder if I'm past a dollar now. I know I am at a dollar, but I wonder if I'm at two dollars now. <laughs> I mean, that's that's all y'all gotta that's all y'all gotta do for anybody that wants to support me. Again, you don't. Again, by sharing, by liking, by following me on all my social medias, by watching everything and dropping comments, having discussions, and all that kind of stuff. That alone helps me. You don't have to put a single dime. You don't have to send a, send a single dime at my direction. Not You don't have to. If you want to, again, I appreciate it. But all that helps me. All that helps me. And again, I was at 400 and something subscribers two, three weeks ago. And now I'm at 600. This has been the fastest I've ever, you know. And again, I know it's going to slow down. But that video that got me to this position position now is at 10K. So I'm going to keep on pushing again. I think every one of y'all who is supporting me, I said about three, four times in this podcast. But I, I really do. Like, I don't know. This is why I'm doing this spicy noodle challenge. This is for y'all. Because I just want y'all to enjoy yourself because... I've mentioned before all the shit that's going on with the world burning and all that kind of stuff. We just need to get away from that. And I know I talk about some personal stuff from time to time, but I want y'all to be able to come to me. Let your, you know, turn your brain off um, or turn it on because you because I, I also want to teach people stuff as well. Well, I want to give people resources. That's why I have Squirrel Moments University, because I want to put stuff out there to help people. So my whole thing is the double E method, which is entertain and educate. That's what I want to do for the people. I want to entertain, but also educate. I want people to learn and get something out of what I'm doing. You know, um, yeah, that is my that is my objective, just to entertain and educate. And I keep going all over the place. So we're having a bunch of squirrel moments right now. But um I'm trying to think what else what, what else I'm saying. I just appreciate all of y'all. I just I love doing this. I really love doing this. And again, I've been going through some stuff and maybe I'll talk about it at a later time. But for now, keep it to myself for now. Y'all know I love to share all my experience and all this stuff, good and bad. So, but eventually we'll get there. But for now, anyway, like I said, y'all come here. Y'all go on YouTube to clear your minds. Just to turn off the outside world. So, if I can do that for y'all. Like, when I do my Let's Plays, which other than the... I haven't did one in a while other than the Callisto Protocol. But I'm still working on Jedi Survivor. 
which I'm gonna talk about more in the um the noodle challenge video. But I keep hearing stuff, but um, and it's 12 in the morning, so it's a little scary. But that's all I got for y'all. Um, again, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, Steven, do you have anything else to say before we go? What okay, so I hold your hand on camera. What look, I'm so I'm so secure about my sexuality. Let me tell y'all something real quick and then we're gonna leave. I'm so secure about my sexuality that I can literally look at a grown man's penis, say, hey, you got a big dick, and still know that I'm a straight heterosexual male. I still know that I like women at the end of the day. Oh my goodness, I be at work and all it is is ass. It's like to the point, it's this girl at my job that I don't know her, she don't know me. But that ass so fat, I just call. I, I gave I gave her a nickname already, Jelly. I've never talked to her, but I nicknamed her Jelly. And I think you can figure out why I nicknamed her Jelly. But that's how secure I am about sexuality. I could look at a grown ass man naked, say that I'm impressed, and know that I still love women at the end of the day. And that's a good position to be in because when I was in middle school, I remember everybody used to call me gay, this, that, with, 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 whatever. I'm going too far. No, I'm not, I'm not going too far. I'm just expressing myself. This is why I have a podcast so I can talk. But. That's how secure about my sexuality. That's how secure I am. Okay. And it is the perfect feeling because it's like, you know, in the back of your mind, you worry about, oh, do I got to walk this way? Do the clothes I got to wear this, that. I don't have that anymore. I used to have it a lot. I don't have it no more. I don't care if somebody think I was gay if I'm bending over and taking in the booty, which I'm not. But, and even if I was, does it matter? Does it matter? But anyway, y'all, that's all I got for y'all. Um, again, I appreciate y'all for watching, tuning in, and all that kind of stuff. And as usual, promoting peace, gaming, and wings. <laughs>